guys welcome to today class now in this class we are discussing some more or uh, uh, means few more problems based on half range fourier series half range fourier series means you know that's either may be sine or cosine series now today i'm going to discuss a few more problems based on your uh, vq your model paper and also uh, last year question paper find the half range fourier sine series one of the problem is all written on the board find the half range sin series of f of x is equal to sin hyperbolic a c divided by sin hyperbolic a by a in the interval 0 comma observe carefully here sin hyperbolic a x is a uh, function is a function of x but sin hyperbolic a by is no, is no, is a constant value now uh, now carefully i to observe the function and carefully i to find out half range fourier sin series Now, first for our convenience, first we are going to write what is my given. Given is nothing but f of x is equal to sine hyperbolic of a x divided by sine hyperbolic of a pi. Okay, over what is interval zero comma pi. I told in my previous videos for half range Fourier series when you are talking about half range, what is my general interval is zero to l. Equal to the given interval. What's the given interval? Zero comma pi. That implies what is my l value? L is equal to pi. That implies what is my n pi x by l? N pi x by l is nothing but n x. Okay. In the next step, based on that, we are going to construct half range sine series for the given function. Okay. Now half range sine series. Series for f of x over zero comma pi is f of x equals summation n ranging from one to infinity d n sine n x. Where what is my d n formula? 2 by l is 2 by pi, 0 to pi, f of x sine n x with respect to x. Okay. In the next step, I want to find out the value of f of you know, f of x into sine n x because here they expecting sine half range sine series or Fourier sine series 2 by pi. Zero to pi. Okay. The function is sine hyperbolic of a x divided by sine hyperbolic of a pi is a function they given in f of x, and then sine n x with respect to x. For my convenience, we are going to keep this function outside. Which function? Hyperbolic a pi is a constant in the next step. 2 by pi of sine hyperbolic a pi 0 to pi. Yeah, you already know that hyperbolic function can also be written as in terms of exponential. Why I am going to express a hyperbolic in terms of exponential? You know the formula. What is integration of e power of x into sine of x plus r minus c? Therefore, then easy to apply the formula. You already derived that uh, result wave in the last year in the reduction formula. Therefore, and also you not last year you already derived that result in second view. Now that is a uh, is uh, now is easy to proceed. Therefore, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to express hyperbolic function in terms of exponential. Sine hyperbolic x is nothing but e power of x minus e power of minus x divided by two. Now from this, okay, e power of x minus e power. What is uh, now from this, yeah. Here, actually, now first from this, first I'm going to write what is my sine hyperbolic a x. It's nothing but e power of a x minus of e power of minus a x by two. In the next step, e power of a x minus of e power of minus a x divided by two into Sine n x with respect to x. 
In the next step, move to denominator 2 and your outside numerator 2 are cancelled. Therefore, first we are, we are going to cancel for these two. Okay. And then what we are going to do in the next step, first you multiply by sin hyperbar, sin x, sin in x with e power of ax and v power of minus ax. And then you take from the linear property of integration, take integration of first term and integration of the second term. In the next step, 1 by pi into sin hyperbolic of a pi of 0 to pi b power of ax sin nx minus 0 to pi b power of minus ax into sin nx with respect to of dx. Each term is in the form of integration of b e power of ax into sine of dx plus r minus c with respect to x is nothing but e power of ax divided by a square plus b square coefficient of exponential and trigonometric function of a into sine of dx plus r minus c minus b into what actually? Cos of dx plus r minus c. Now this thing we already known that this, this formula we already derived, where we already derived, derived in made in a few level. Now this is both the function is in the form of e power of x into sin of dx plus r minus c. In the first term, first, uh, first integral, my a is a and then b is n. In the second term, a is minus a and b is what? n only. Okay. From this formula, yeah, 1 by pi into sin hyperbolic of a pi of e power of a s divided by a square plus b, b means what? Quotient of x means trigonometric function n square. Okay, of what's the other thing? A, A into sin nx, sin nx minus n into b, b means n, into cos nx. Yes, now better I to keep this separately, 0 to pi. Next is, similarly we go for, for the second term, for the same formula, minus minus e power of minus ax divided by a square minus a whole square what is minus a whole square a square only plus n square of of what's a function the function is nothing but a minus a sin nx minus n into cos nx What's the limit? 0 to okay. 0 to Now, uh, I think it's clear, it's all written on the board, which formula we are going to using here for you in the formula. In the next step, before moving to the next step, I told number of times, whenever having a product of sine or cos, first you verify that what happened that function value plus find the limit. Now here, first you have to take for sine in x sin nx power x is equal to pi is sin n pi. What is sin n pi is 0. Put x is equal to 0, sin 0 is 0. Similarly, cos nx power x is equal to pi cos n pi. What is cos n pi value? Minus 1 to the power of n. x is equal to 0. What is cos 0 is 1. In the next step, 1 by pi into sin hyperbolic a pi of of b. Now, observe carefully for sin nx for upper and lower limit is 0. Where you have sin, better I have to write that is 0, not necessary to apply the 
uh, limit for this function. It function a into sin in x. These two terms are must be zero. It is already verified. If only we are applying the limit though inside the power bracket, those terms having cosine function. Okay. Now I keep the constant. What's the constant? A square plus n square is a constant. Apply the upper limit. What is my upper limit? Pi. E power of a pi. Half. Yeah, this is zero minus n into. What is the value of x by cos n pi? What is cos n pi? Is minus one to the power of x. Okay. Minus lower limit, lower, lower limit. What's the lower limit? E power of zero. What is e power of zero? Is one. Ah, uh, one into. This is zero minus n into what is cos zero. What is cos zero? Is one. Close the power bracket. This is nothing but upper and lower limit of the first uh, integral. And move to the second one. Minus one by. A square plus n square half. Apply the upper limit. What's the upper limit? E power of minus a pi half minus n n into cos n pi is minus one to the power of n minus e power of zero is one. This minus n into cos zero is one. Okay. Now yeah. move to the next step. While we move to the next step, observe carefully. Now I do what's a, a common factor e square plus n square. Therefore, one by pi into e square plus n square into sine of hyperbolic a pi half. What's the remaining here? Now I do multiply it back. What we get? Minus n into minus one to the power of n e power of a pi. Okay. This is minus into minus plus n. Okay. And then minus into minus is plus n into minus 1 to the power of n into what actually? e power of minus a pi. What is this actually? Minus into minus plus plus into minus is minus. Observe carefully. Minus into minus plus plus into minus is minus. Minus into minus plus plus into minus is minus. We get n. Now what are the terms are cancelled? Plus n and minus n are cancelled. Okay. Next move to the next. From these two term, from these two term, what's a common factor? N into minus one to the power of n. What's a common factor? N into minus one to the power of n is common factor divided by pi into a square plus n square into sine hyperbolic of a pi of e power of a pi minus a pi minus e power of a pi. In the next step, just now we know that what is sine hyperbolic x. Just now I had to explain. Now just few minutes before. Sine hyperbolic x is nothing but e power of x minus e power of minus x divided by 2. That implies e power of x minus e power of minus x is 2 sine hyperbolic x. 2 sine hyperbolic x. Okay. This implies e power of minus x minus of e power of x. Suppose you multiply it by minus sign, this becomes plus, this becomes minus, is nothing but minus 2 times of sine hyperbolic of x. Now this is in the form of this. Okay. Now this can also be written as n into minus 1 to the power of n divided by pi into a square plus n square into sine hyperbolic of a pi sine hyperbolic of a pi into what is this actually minus 2 sin hyperbolic of e pi. You compare it. You compare from this to this. Okay. The next step, what happens? Sin hyperbolic a pi and sin hyperbolic a pi is cancelled. Now finally we get for bn is 
put this here minus 2n minus 1 to the power of n divided by n square plus e square. Yeah. n square plus e square. Now observe carefully, I told after you writing for here, vn is 2 for 1 to infinity or not, how can you know that the denominator quantity of vn in terms of n? What is the denominator n square plus e square equal to 0? n square is equal to minus e square. What is my n? Plus or minus a. a is a set of, suppose is a real number, maybe negative or positive, we get a what is the value for n is a imaginary. n is a imaginary value. But our summation n start from 1 to infinity is a set of positive integer. Even though give a positive value for a or negative value, we get a imaginary number. But none of the imaginary number is not involved in our summation 1 to infinity. Now this is a one of our important thing. Even though we get n square plus e square equal that we get n is equal to minus n square is equal to minus a square. Therefore n is equal to plus or minus i a. Plus or minus i a n is a real number also. What we get is an imaginary number. But summation n is only have set of positive integers. Therefore this value does not belongs to in the range. Therefore, we have to say, write true for n is equal to, this is true for n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. Next, based on that, we are going to construct the Fourier series. f of x is equal to, while writing a Fourier series, I'll pick minus 2 is a constant. It can't take this is outside because we're having a n also. 1 to infinity, n into minus 1 to the power of n divided by n square plus a square into find nx is the, the required is the required of range Find series for the given function over what is the interval? The interval is actually 0 to 2 n. 0 to, not to, sorry, 0 to pi, not 0 to 2, 0 to, 0 to pi. n is pi. This is a way to construct a range for your time series for the given function. The function is which is the different function is what actually sine hyperbolic a x divided by sine sine hyperbolic a pi. Sine hyperbolic a pi is a constant. Sine hyperbolic a x, how to do it means first we have to express in terms of uh, a, a, in, in terms of what actually exponential function. Why we are going to express in terms of exponential means once you express in terms of exponential, what we get actually, we get in the standard form of integration, e power of dx into sine of dx plus r plus e. This formula we already derived where in few level, with help of that easily have to evaluate first, in term, first term and also second term. Now I, I'll a uh, little, little bit zoom out for student purpose. If you want to observe the entire problem in one screen, now this is a way I to solve the problem. I think you clear how to proceed for this, okay? In the next step, before moving to the next problem, again I will show it after the zoom in up of the given problem. This is my function. Don't confuse this function. Yeah, I am I'm trying to explain it. Even though they were not given the standard form, how to proceed, how to do MIT, how to find out solution for the half range for your series for sine and cosine series. Now here, now uh, uh, sine hyperbolic is instead of hyperbolic is maybe will give cos. There are supposed to express uh, in terms of exponential e power of x plus e power of minus 6 by 2 using that formula express and simplify that. And then carefully apply your fundamental formula for integration e power of e, e x into cos of e x plus minus 6 simplify. 
Now, even though we get some value, but that value is not in the range 1 to infinity. So, this is true for n is equal to 1 to infinity. Now, this again, I have to do it uh, the problem. Okay. Now, uh, now I move to the next problem. Problem. This also they given in the question paper, last year question paper. Second, today's second problem. Find the half range. Sign series of sign series of f of x equals sign x for 0 less than equal to x less than y cos x pi by 4 cos x for pi by 4 less than x, less than equal to y by 2. Now, here they are given a splitting function. The question is arise, how to construct half range for your sign series or just sign series of the function. Now, we already solved some few problems in the construction and general construction of Fourier series. Of course, the function is a splitting function. There what we did, we are once you splitting function means we are going to take overall integral. Here also we are going to take overall integral. The given is f of x is equal to sin x for 0 greater than equal to less than equal to x less than pi by 4 less than pi by 4. Okay. Cross x pi by 4 less than x less than equal to pi by 2. What is our overall integral 0 to pi by 2? In half range, what is our integral is 0 to L. Implies that what is my L is pi by 2. L is pi by 2. That implies what is my 1 by L. 1 by L is nothing but 2 by now n pi x by l n pi x into what is 1 by l 2 by pi by l pi by cancel what will get 2 by x now based on that try to write the formula half range sine series of sine series for f of x f of x over 0 comma pi by 2 is f of x is equal to summation n ranging from 1 to infinity b n Sign of 2nx. Where? What is my BN formula? 2 by L. What is my L? 5 by 1 by L. 2 by L. 1 by L means 2 into 2 by 5. Yeah, 1 by L. 2 by 5. 0 to 5 by 2. F of x. Sign of 2nx. With respect to in the next step, we can't evaluate directly for 0 to pi by 2 because the given function is a splitting function. The given function is a splitting function, therefore 4 by pi of 0 to pi by 4, 0 to pi by 4, what's the function? Now we are going to split the integral 0 to pi by 2 at which point pi by 4 because they have a break at pi by 4. That's why we are going to give a break at which point pi by 4. Giving a break for the entire interval depends upon what type of splitting function they provide in the problem. 0 to pi by 4, what's a function? Sin x into sin 
2 in x with respect to x. Pi by 4 to pi by 2 was a function the given cos x, cos x into sine of 2 in x with respect to x. Now, in the next step, I want to uh, evaluate this by using the fundamental transformation formula because it's a product of two trigonometry function. Madam is a product of two function. Why don't you go for UV rule or Bernoulli's rule? You can't go for Bernoulli's UV rule because product of any one of the function is not equal to zero after the two derivatives. Suppose you apply UV rule or Bernoulli's rule that comes goes up to infinity in both first integral and also second integral. Why? Because none of the function, product of none of the function, either may be first term or may be second term, is not equal to zero after the two derivatives. So what you know that your uh, UV rule, you can't go for that. Suppose you apply that, we get infinite number of terms. Once we get infinite number of terms, you can't uh, take, uh, 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 you can't find out from uh, compact form or what is my definite value of Pn. It goes infinite. How to write in the summation Bn value? It's not, uh, it's very tedious, it's not uh, possible. Therefore, now using transformation formula, we are going to convert these two, the product of these two trigonometry function must be some more difference of two trigonometry function by using transformation formula. For first integral, I acquired sin A, sin B. What is sin A, sin B is nothing but two sin A, sin B is nothing but cos of a minus b cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b. Okay. Here, what is my a? a is dx is 2nx. What is a, a plus b? is nothing but 1 plus 2n into x. What is my a minus b? is nothing but 1 minus 2n into x. This is for first integral. Similarly, for second integral is in the form of 2 2 cos of cos a sin b. What is 2 cos a sin b? Sin of a plus b minus sin of a minus b. What is my a? Is here dx. This is also 2nx. We get same thing. a plus b is same. 1 plus 2n into x. And also a minus b is the same. 1 minus 2n into x. This away I took infinity. This is for the second integral. Now anyway here have 4. If 1 or 2, 4 can be written as 2 into 2, write 1, 2 here and take another 2 inside the integral. 2 by 5, okay. Integration of 0 to pi by 4, okay, fine. Now what we get actually? So 2 sin a sin b is nothing but cos of a minus b. a minus b is what? Cos of 1 minus 2 n into x minus cos of a plus b, 1 plus 2n into x with respect to x. I move to the second integral. Again, in the, I multiply with first integral and also second integral by 2. We have already taken 2 inside the uh, bracket. 5 by 4 to 5 by 2. 2 cos a sin b is nothing but sin of a plus b means 1 plus 2n into x minus sin of a minus b, 1 minus 2n into x with respect to x. Okay. In the next step, in the next step, I do integrate. Integration, you know how to integrate cos and sin, where to integrate here. While doing integration, I take 2 by pi is a constant. Integration of cos. What is integration of cos? Sin, okay. Sin of 1 minus 2n into x. Yeah. 
this is actually sine. Okay. Uh, suppose you have confused, better I do erase it for this and then I could write one by one sine of x divided by divided sine of 1 minus and no need I to write here the bracket only x divided by quotient of x 1 minus dn minus of again integration of cos is sine sine of 1 plus 2n divided into x divided by quotient of x is 1 plus 2n what's the limit 0 to 5 by 4 okay in our next step similarly i move to the second integral plus now uh, while doing integration of uh, whatever term sign what is integration of sign minus cos of 1 plus 2 n into x divided by quotient of x what's quotient of x 1 plus 2 n minus again i have to integrate sign integration of sign is minus minus cos we get minus already have one minus sign here so minus into minus plus cos of 1 minus 2n into x divided 1 minus 2n into x divided by quotient of x is 1 minus 2n. What's the limit? 5 by 4 to 5 by 2. Okay, fine. Close the bracket. In the next step, before going to apply the limit, first we have to why don't to verify what happened sine and cos function correspond in the limits. Okay. Now sin of then easy for the simplification sin of 1 minus 2n into this is the first term I'm talking about into pi by 4 it's nothing but sin of pi by 4 minus 2 cancel with 4 what we get n pi by 2 sin of a minus b is nothing but you know that uh, sin a cos b minus cos a cos a sin b. What is a here? Here this is my a, this is a, this is my b. Okay. a is pi by 4. Either sin pi by uh, either now no need I to write sin a yeah, if you, I'll write one similar, uh, no need I to write because you know what is sine of a minus b, sine a cos b, sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. A is pi by 4, either sine of pi by 4 or cos of pi by 4, what's the value is common, 1 by root. I keep 1 by root outside. I'll write cos b, cos b means what? Cos of a pi by 2 minus sine b. What is sine b? Sine of a pi. Everything is clear, just apply sin of a minus b. Once you apply sin of a minus b, sin of pi by 4, cos of pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. I take one common factor, that's all. Similarly, sin of 1 plus 2n into pi by 4 is nothing but sin of pi by 4 minus, uh, plus what actually n pi by 2 cancel with 4. Sin of a plus b. Same thing, we get more middle sign must be cos of 1 by root 2 into cos of n pi by 2 plus sin of n pi by 2. Similarly, I have to verify for cos. Cos of 1 minus 2n into pi by 4 is nothing but cos of pi by 4 minus n pi by 2 cos of a minus b. What is cos of uh, a minus b is nothing but cos a cos b plus sin a so cos a cos b plus sin a sin b cos, cos a cos b plus sin a sin b cos a pi by 4 sin a pi by 4 what's a common factor 1 by 2 what we get cos of n pi by 2 plus sin of n pi while move to cos of 1 plus 2n into pi by 4, it's nothing but cos of 
pi by 4 plus n pi by 2 to calculate 4. Again, cos of a plus b. What is cos of a plus b? Is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. Cos a cos uh, sin a is 1 by root 2 because pi by 4, a is pi by 4, root 2. And if the sign compared to the previous step, you get minus. That's all. Yeah. Now we are going to be sure and also, yeah, sign 0. What is my sign 0? Zero. What is my um, cos 0? Cos 0 is say, 1. And also you know that uh, apply the pi by 2 and also I to find out pi by 2 also. Pi by 2 for cos, not for the sign because here I am pi by 4 to pi by 2. Okay. Therefore, I want cos of another value 1 plus 2n into pi by 2. What we get? Cos of pi by 2, 2 to cancel n pi. What is, uh, what is the value of cos of pi by 2 plus theta? What is cos of pi by 2 plus theta? Now observe carefully here. Here we have, uh, what is the value? Uh, cos of 1 plus 2n. Yeah, cos of 1 plus 2n into pi by 2. Once you multiply that pi by 2, what we get? Pi by 2, 2 to plus n pi. What is cos of pi plus theta? It's minus cos theta, minus cos, sorry, cos to sine. Sorry, one minute. I did a uh, mistake here. Just a minute. Okay. Yeah, observe carefully for this. Cos of pi by 2 plus theta. Cos of pi by 2 plus theta is nothing but uh, uh, you already know that uh, 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 cos of pi by 2 plus theta is nothing but uh, if you want to, you know everyone how to write cos of pi by 2 plus theta and uh, sine of pi by 2 plus theta. Now you apply uh, that, what we get, cos in pi, uh, sorry, cos to sine. Now cos to sine. Now uh, cos of a plus b. Uh, it is the easiest way to verify, cos of a plus b. What is cos of a plus b? Cos a cos b sine a sine b. Now here, see, cos of pi by 2 plus theta is what? minus sin theta. What is theta is? Minus sin n pi. What is sin n pi value? 0. This is the one way or you know cos of pi by 2 plus theta is minus cos pi by 2 is cos to sin. Minus sin sin of what is the value? n pi. What is sin of n pi is 0. Similarly, cos of 1 minus 2n into pi by 2 is nothing but cos of pi by 2 minus 2 to cancel n pi. Now here cos of pi by 2 minus theta is sin theta. What is theta? n pi, sin n pi. What is sin n pi is 0. Yeah. This is a way to in the next, this shows that pi by 2 value for cos must be 0 in both cases. Carefully, I have to apply the up and lower limit for this. Now, 2 by pi of 1 by 1 minus 2n is a constant. A bit outside, apply the upper limit. What's upper limit? Sin of 1 minus 2n into pi by 4. Yeah, what is that? 1 by root 2 into cos of n pi by 2 minus sin of n pi by 2. You can't cancel uh, any sin of cos uh, comfortably because I, in none of the function is not equal to 0 for both upper and lower limit. At least it's not equal to 0, maybe upper limit, maybe a lower limit. Suppose it's 0 for both upper and lower limit, we are uh, neglect that term, okay? Minus lower limit. What is my lower limit here? 0. What is sin 0? Is 0. Okay. And then I move to the next term. While writing the next term, 1 by minus 1 by 1 plus 2n is a constant. Keep it outside. 
apply pi by 4. 1 plus 2 n into pi by 4 is nothing but 1 by n2 into cos of n pi by 2 plus sin of n pi by 2. Okay. This is for 0 to pi by 4. For both terms. Move to the pi by 4 to pi by 2. Yeah. Now, while writing the Third term minus plus into minus is minus 1 by 1 minus 2n. It's a constant. Apply the upper limit. What is upper limit? Pi by 2. Cos of 1 plus 2n into pi by 2. What we get? 0. Minus lower limit. What is my lower limit? Is uh, pi by 4. Cos of 1 plus 2n into uh, pi by 4. This is what we get actually. 1, 1 by root 2 of, yeah, this is a thing I want to write, third uh, uh, step is cos of n pi by 2, yes, now this is uh, cos of 1 plus 2 n into x, so we have to write this one, not for that, cos of a plus b, it's nothing but cos a cos b minus n a sin a, cos of n pi by 2, Minus sine of n pi by 2. Yeah, close the bracket. Now here, plus 1 by 1 minus 2n into upper limit. What is my upper limit? Upper limit is pi by 2. What is cos of 1, uh, 1 minus 2n into pi by 2 is 0. 0 minus the low limit. Low limit is pi by 4. Cos of uh, 1 minus 2 n into pi by 4. The limit is pi by 4. This will be to write. 1 by root 2 into cos of n pi by 2. Yes. Yeah, observe carefully for this. Now, I, what we are going to write? Cos of 1 minus. This is plus. n pi by 2. Now, observe carefully, this is a value for, uh, so what actually, sign, uh, what about the sign of, yeah, if you know, I have to verify before moving to the next, sign of 1 minus 2n into pi by 4. What is sign of 2n minus 1 into pi by 4? This is, a, yeah, minus sign 0 is 0, minus 1 by 1 plus 2n as a constant, apply the upper limit. What is the upper limit is pi by 4. Cos of sine of 1 plus 2 n into pi by 4 is this is a yeah right correct and next uh, keep the constant outside apply pi by 2 once you apply pi by 2 for 1 plus 2 n or 1 minus 2 n is 0 0 minus 1 plus 2 n what is 1 plus 2 n cos of uh, 1 plus 2 n into pi by 4 is this yeah we are writing this and next uh, uh, plus 1 by 1 minus 2 n Upper limit is what actually? Zero. Upper limit is zero. Why? Because cos of 1 minus 2 n into pi by 2 is zero. Minus 1 cos of 1 minus 2 n into pi by 4. 1 minus 2 n into pi by 4. It's a value. We have to substitute. Yeah. We substituted. Right. Yeah. This is 1 plus 2 n. Yeah. This is 1 minus 2 n. Now, this is correct. What I return here? Substitution is correct. Yeah. Simplify further. Now, 2 by 5. I collect the term, those term having 1 by 1 minus 2n. 1 by 1 minus 2n into 1 by root 2 into cos of n, n pi by 2 like that. First, you observe carefully. We collect the term 1 by 1 minus 2n. And also from these two terms, what's the common factor? The common factor, so observe, this is minus into minus plus. Please observe carefully, minus into minus plus. 1 by 1 minus 2 n into 1 by root 2, cos of n pi by 2 minus sin of both are must be same. We get 2 times of, I have to add these two. What are the things we are going to add? This one and this one we are going to add it. Also add what we get 2 times of. Plus minus into minus plus we get same term 1 by root 2 into cos of n pi by 2 minus sin of n pi by 2. Okay. Next.
next observe carefully plus c into minus is uh, yeah here uh, no no i did uh, here mistake i'll keep this is 1 by 1 plus 2 that's correct yeah observe carefully that's why right. this is a each steps are very very important well, suppose you did anywhere mistake definitely you don't get the correct answer yeah just a minute i'm going to remove this now here, observe carefully what I did. If you want to uh, suppose you are confused now, see, this is 1 by 1 plus 2n, this is 1 by 1 minus 2n. Yeah, this is 1 by 1 plus 2n. No, we can't take uh, what is 1 by 1 plus 2n like that. Common. Both are different. If you want to take these two, 1 by 1 plus 2n, you simplify that minus into minus plus. Then, then that's a, a thing. Other by, now first you correct 1 by 1 minus 2n. Okay, fine. 1 by 1 minus 2n. I'm going to correct. 1 by root 2 is there. Here also 1 by root 2 is there. I'm going to take 1 by root 2. Yeah. I'm going to take these two terms. From these two terms, 1 by root 2, half, 1 by 1 minus 2n is common. What's the remaining here? For first term, cos of n pi by 2 minus sin of n pi by 2. Okay. For the, uh, now I do better to write for this. Yeah, just a minute. I can use some uh, different uh, bracket this is one bracket this is a first term keep the bracket for small bracket plus into minus is minus cos of n pi by 2 plus sine of n pi by 2 okay fine in the next step correct the term those term having 1 plus 2n yeah, 1 plus 2n. Observe carefully the terms having 1 plus 2n is this term and this term. Okay. Now I have to take minus into minus. This is plus. Okay. This is minus. Only I am going to uh, take the common factor is plus 1 by 1, 1 plus 2n. 1 plus 2n into 1 by root. Yeah. Better I to take some different uh, notation. Observe the cross term. You take common factor is 1 by root 2 into 1 by 1 plus 2n. It's a uh, common. Write the remaining term. What's the remaining? Minus of cos of n pi by 2 plus sin of n pi. Now, this is minus into minus what happened? Plus cos of n pi by 2 minus sin of n pi by 2. Please observe carefully. Must and should I to do very carefully for this minus, minus into minus plus. Minus into minus plus right minus into minus plus this is uh, n plus 2n this is minus n minus this is minus okay now i to simplify further very carefully i'm doing little bit slow because suppose you are not done properly this is a given in the question paper we have to do practice then only easy to do it quickly okay now once you remove this bracket cos n pi by 2, observe cos n pi by 2 minus cos n pi by 2 is cancelled. Minus n n pi by 2 minus n n pi by 2. What we get? Minus 2 sin n pi by 2. It's 1. And next, plus 1 by 1 plus 2 n into 1 by root 2 of. Now I have to simplify this. Minus cos n pi by 2 minus cos n pi by 2 is cancelled. What's the remaining? 
minus sin n pi by 2 minus sin pi by multiplied by minus sin minus and plus cancel minus minus we have to add what we get minus 2 sin of n pi by 2 okay. now again we are going to take common factor from these two terms this 1 by minus 2 by root 2 minus 2 by root 2 sin n pi by 2 is a common Two by five into one by root two into minus two sin n pi by two sin n pi by two the common because you observe this is our common what's the remaining now remaining is one by n minus two n plus 1 by 1 plus 2. Yeah. Now I am going to explain separately 1 by 1 plus 2n and also 1 by 1 minus 2n. We take LCM and simplify. 1 plus 2n into 1 minus 2n. What we get? 1 minus 2n plus 1 minus 1 plus 2n. What we get? 2 times. Therefore, simplify that, what we get in times. Already 2 into 2, 4 by 5 into root 2, sin of n pi by 2, half, this is nothing but 2 divided by, yeah, we have minus sign. Plus into minus is minus, 2 into 2, 4 minus. Uh, 1 minus 2n into 1 plus 2. In the next step, I take this negative sign in the denominator. Now I am going to take this negative sign. I am going to take this negative sign in the denominator. Means 1 minus 2n can be written as 2n minus 1. In the next step, 4 twos are 8. 8 by 5 root 2 sin of n pi by 2. We want to write here itself what we get 2n minus 1 into 2n plus 1. I take the minus n in the denominator. This is my bn. This is my bn. Now I want to know, I want to know that whether this bn is true for all values of n in the denominator factors. After once we get uh, bn, we put the denominator factor. What is my bn factor? Uh, what is the uh, denominator bn factor is 2n minus 1 is one factor equal to 0. Another one is 2n plus 1 equal to 0. From this, what is n? Half. From this, what is my n? Minus half. But our summation is start from 1 to infinity. This shows that n is equal to half is not included. n is equal to minus half also not included. Our summation start from 1 to infinity. Therefore, confidently write this is true for n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. But the next is, is true. Either maybe you get 0 or uh, not 0 value, but you don't get it infinite value. Where we'll get infinite value? n is equal to minus half, n is equal to half. Both the values not included in our summation. Summation start from 1 to infinity. Now we are going to construct the Fourier series. What is my Fourier series? f of x is equal to 8 by 5 root 2 is a constant. If outside n ranging from 1 to infinity, sine of n pi by 2 divided by 2n minus 1 into 2n plus 1 okay, into sine of what actually? Uh, the sine uh, sin, sin of 2nx. Now observe carefully, we already know that sin of n pi by 2 is two cases. 0 if n is even plus or minus if n is odd. Therefore, not necessary to take even cases here because sin n pi by 2 0 means entire product must be 0. If we want to simplify further, pi by root 2 
to write this is nothing but n ranging from only we are going to take r values 1 to k plus r to infinity because sin n pi by 2 0 even product must be a 0 means entire term must be 0. Sin of n pi by 2 divided by 2n minus 1 into 2n plus 1 into what actually sin of 2nx is the is the required half range for your time series. What's the interval? 0 to yeah, pi. 0 to pi by 0 to pi by 0 to pi by 4, pi by 4 to pi by 2 means what's our entire range? 0 to pi. Now this is a way to construct. I know this is a little bit tedious. We can't help. We have given already in a question paper. I am discussing in the class. Carefully I have to do it. But now while doing uh, uh, simplification, the Mustang should have to take care, very easy to understand that uh, and how we have to simplify. Now, this is a uh, this is actually what we are going to do. Here, suppose I am going to uh, zoom out, you can't show it entire the problem very comfortable. Um, what I am going to do here, I am going to show it uh, half of the problem first in one uh, screen. Okay, this is my uh, problem start from that, okay. Yeah. This is a one uh, uh, set. Yeah. And next, move to the second plot for this, okay. It's a way I to solve without giving confusion. Please try to understand what I did in this problem. Before I'm going to wind up, I'm going to brush up within a few seconds. I'm going to wind up today's class. Now here, once you apply, you know, carefully apply what is uh, your uh, transformation formula, better you write the general formula and then you replace A and B. After that, you integrate carefully. Uh, once you integrate, uh, you know that uh, once you integrate, sine becomes cos, cos becomes sine. And then before going to apply the limit directly, first you find out what happened the limit value. And then we have to proceed. I think uh, you, are, you are clear, clear for this, how I have done. I take much time to explain for this, not necessary to explain one second for that. And then finally, if you want, leave it this itself, but you know that what is sine and pi by 2. So instead of taking 1 to infinity, you have to take only R cases. This is a way to solve the problem. This is one of your uh, last year final video question paper. Thank you very much for listening for uh, talk what I explained, how to construct half range for your sine and cosine series. I will come back again few more problems based on half range for your sine and cosine series. I am going to take different different problems. The rest of the problem please record my notes then uh, easy to understand everything I written in my notes cos of minus theta sine of minus theta. Okay. Bye see you and take care. I'll, I will come back again in the next class some more.